I just found something else living among the algae. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. About a week ago, I found some fungus growing on the inside of my chlorella tank. This bamboo wooden lid that was sealing the top of the tank. And I found all these little white hairs and I knew immediately it was fungus. I'll get into that more in a minute. I first wanted to tell you how my algae is growing after 46 days. This is probably one of my last algae growth check-in videos I'll be doing because I've gone from four milliliters. If you remember, I had these four one milliliter centrifuge tubes that I started with and that's now expanded to 6,500 milliliters. So I've reached the total volume that I want. I'm gonna create some backup cultures, but I have these two chlorella and spirulina in the one gallon tanks. And this is about the size of operation that I want right now. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the fungus I found growing in the tank, the alga viewed underneath a microscope from all of the containers I was growing in, a pH meter check, a optical density check with the Seshi stick, and finally mixing media and transferring the culture. So a quick note on the fungus I found growing in the tank. After checking the algae under the microscope, there's no contamination and it's completely fine. But the interesting thing about the fungus is it respires. So like humans, they breathe in oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. So since it was found on top of the algae or within the container of the algae, but on the lid, um, it's actually a perfect environment for the fungus to be living in because as the algae releases O2 oxygen as its waste after photosynthesis, the fungus can actually take that now and it's in a oxygen rich environment. It's moist, it's warm, uh, so in a weird way, it's a symbiotic relationship within that tank. One of the things I wanted to highlight for you in this video is showing the just overall visual density of the alga. Both my spirulina and chlorella are doing very well at this point, 46 days in. And in all three of the containers I'm using, that is the 40 milliliter flask, the 32 ounce mason jar, and the 1.6 liter glass tube, everything's done really well. There's been no contamination. The algae under the microscope looks very healthy. And even with the little bit of fungus I found on the inside of the lid, that had zero effect on the health of the algae. Here you can see both of my alga in the 1.6 liter glass tubes and they're both doing very well. If you remember, the spirulina was a little bit stunted. It turned a little bit brown, and it didn't have that beautiful dark blue color that it has now, and I'm so happy that it rebounded. You can see that in both of these glass containers, they're very thick and ready to be expanded. After stirring up the containers very well, I went ahead and checked the pH and optical density of the alga. It's important to note that the reading on the pH meter was coming in a little bit high. It came in 0.2 too high. And I know this because I have a few calibration solutions that I'm able to put my pH meter into and it'll give me a reading that should equal the actual calibration number. Next, when I take the optical density with the Seshi stick, I make sure to try to keep the same amount of lighting and relative environment between both alga or whichever container I'm pulling from to be as consistent as possible. All four culture samples were thick and ready to be expanded. The final step for me here is to create more media so I can expand my cultures. I'll link the other videos I've posted where I go more in depth into the proportions and conversions of how much ingredients I use to create my media, but basically it's four parts. It's water, salts, minerals, and nutrients. After you have your proportions, make sure to stir well and enjoy. 
All right, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Uh, if you like the video, if you find it helpful, please like, comment. I'd love to hear from you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if this is something that interests you. And I'll get into the kits that I've been growing in uh, in another video, but I think it's pretty cool. I just wanted to show my manual pump operation. So. I was using the same thing in the 1600 milliliter tube, but here in the gallon tank, I added a air stone. And it's actually pretty awesome. Um, I'll be building more of these in the future, so please let me know if you'd be interested in having one. All right, take care.